and welcome to your big fat mid expansion review healer edition. Oh yes, we covered the melee. A brief introduction then, where are healers now overall? Well, it's safe to say Blizzard has pretty much overall abandoned the idea that healers will care about mana. A big topic of discussion we had pre-WAD, uh, that it generally just doesn't work. Simple as that. Healers don't like being restricted by mana. A much better gameplay decision is to have healers with restrictions on spells that are very powerful, and that means they care about them more, and they think about them more, rather than just being, oh, I'm oom. While it is still entirely possible to oom your character extremely quickly, uh, the average and above average players just don't run into that issue. In most cases, there are some classes who still do care about mana in before that. Uh, a brief note on the feedback that we got from the melee one is uh, the top comment actually was pointing out that we're talking about things that I have said is bad design philosophy. Yes, of course. I, st I still believe in certain philosophies of the game, but that doesn't change what is. I can't, I can't escape the fact that that's not what's part of the game, right? That's just the way it is. So, of course, in these discussions, we'll be talking about how the game actually is, not exactly what I would prefer. So, that is the situation. So, let's kick off. Hmm. Let's go Druid. The Druid. Fearful. Would be some of the comments because of the aspects of the fox removal i think that is completely unnecessary worry uh, there's a big argument right now for the viable third fourth and potentially fifth healing spots in raids after the big two which we'll get to shortly and druids are one of those that are a little bit worried about their raid spot you shouldn't be worried about your raid spot because all things being equal it won't really matter the the, the situation is depending on your raid it's more concerning to see your dps's and your tanks take less damage than it is for you to be like well i could do a little bit of extra healing here the loss of aspects of the fox certainly does have an effect on tranquility in certain environments very very specific and it's such an arbitrary point Sometimes, yes, you have to move and want to tranquility while you do it. Blackland. And I feel that a lot of the feedback that people are complaining about is based around Blackhand Mythic specifically. Which is just ludicrous. Because it's the end boss which is always designed to be a little bit on the tricky side. And it was designed with aspects of the foxes in mind. So, yeah, don't worry about it too much. What we can say is that the druid... That's fabulous toolkit at its disposal. Absolutely fabulous toolkit, which works really well. A wild growth timed well will completely outplay any player who isn't uh, a better healer than you. Simply put, that is the case. And there's no reason to be arguing about that. The Resto Druid, as many of you will know, has been my absolute favorite, favorite healer. In Wall of Draino. I love the play style. I love the abilities we have. I love the fact that we have access to various things like Stampeding Raw, which often are never used. And I think that's the saddest point. I've seen so many, many people say, Well, we have Stampeding Raw. When do we ever use that? That's on you, motherfucker. For real, dude. If you're like, Well, I'd go like eight fights without using Stampeding Raw. Why are you doing that? You're reducing your raid's DPS. Do you not realize that? Do you not realize that every single fight in Wallace of Draenor involves movement of some point? Even if it's not like mandatory to get a fucking Stampeding Raw out at certain points, you should be thinking, Where can I use it? When am I melee having to run a lot? When am I ranged having to move? Can I do something here to help it out? That is completely on you. You have access to these tools. And this is why I love my Resto Druid. I love looking for extra points, extra moments I could do things like that. And if necessary, I can use the really great talent system, which Druids really revel in, revel in, to go more single target, more AoE. I can pick and choose. I can alter. I can change things. As much as there are standard specs given, especially in Mythic, which is more AoE-centric, there's no doubt about that, you still have those choices to prop up your raid depending on your setup. And I think that is absolutely wonderful. I really like it. I do. I do. I really like it. I'm not going to change that. On to the monkey monks. Monks are looking promising, man. Promising. Real promising right now. And that's because of a certain set bonus, is it not? Extend life, I believe it's called. Extend life, our tier 18 set bonus that is coming in, which will finally finally give some sort of burst on demand healing. <laughs> not burst, I suppose, to renewing mist. The monks under underwent several changes and in fact had a really low representation early on in WAD, although I don't think that was completely justified, but I understand it, especially by the top guilds. And it was down to that lack of control, that lack of control. So Blizzard fixed that by essentially giving you pools of mist and making Renewing Mist realistically quite spammable, able to blanket the raid in Renewing Mist whenever you wanted, which meant your uplifts weren't, you know, mistimed or in fact just affecting people who didn't need it. 
and those who really did need it weren't getting it. That problem was kind of essentially solved by just allowing near enough everybody to have Renewing Mist. And so if everybody's got it, then it's all good times. Um, the gameplay is still quite static in my opinion. You still run into these weird situations, which I think can easy easily be solved, which is where you can have a lot of chi that you have to spend because that gives you mana tea back. So you don't want to sit with chi generators not using them, so you essentially start spamming. And there are them awkward moments where you're like, well, my uplift isn't really going to do much, my enveloping mist isn't going to do a great deal here, but I kind of need to spend the chi because I'm about to generate more chi, and if I waste that, I lose out on mana tea, and all these kind of things come into play. And you have these decisions going. I would love to see and we suggested this early on but i would really love to see at least one extra if not two extra ways of spending chi on a mist weaver something that is reactive and not overpowered by that i mean something like uh prayer of mending which you know you can spend maybe three or four chi on things that have renewing mist and when they next take damage it will do something something along those lines so you can be a little bit proactive the monk has a great opportunity to be proactive what is nice to see is that fist weaving is not useless it's played right it's really not useless there's a time and a place to put out some decent dps and support your healers in times where they just don't need you generate a lot of manatee in the process and really have a good time with that getting involved in the melee doing things and abusing the fact that monks don't get targeted by various mechanics it's nice to see that the monks have become very solid very very solid the loss of aspect of the fox means that revival has far more power in comparison to those weird situations where things like tranquility aren't as good as we just talked about with the druids and overall the mist weaver is a very very solid addition to your raid very very solid addition to your raid right um hmm. <laughs> the paladin the paladin one of the two it talks about the big two early on in the video and yeah the paladin is one of the big two you want a paladin in your raid now there is a lot of complaints that come along with being a paladin right now and i i agree and i said this from the very start and it's not something that has changed and i feel really bad for paladins i do why <laughs> it seems odd though, that like one of the most required or wanted specs in the raid i feel bad for because i find the gameplay of the holy paladin to be absolutely awful so bad like really bad i feel like a light well every time i play it i don't enjoy it one single bit is you throw your beacons out it's mandatory to have those beacons on the go and you're just like well i'll just heal three people all the time with my same couple of spells and yeah, while there are opportunities now to throw in things like Holy Radiance and Light of Dawn and all that kind of stuff, um, they're just not that great. And I have these two kind of weird choices that basically mimic and mirror two spells I already have, right? So I'm just duplicating the same thing. I'm just doing exactly the same over and over again, hoping for some procs and making it work. But ultimately, I'm just turreting heals out. Uh, a little comment on the utility here. This one was from... I i got to remember, I believe it was MMO Champion, is people arguing about the utility of Paladins. Paladin utility is amazing, but it is true, which was the main crux of the argument, is that the utility that the Holy Paladin brings is 99% class-based, not spec-based, which I think is a fair and solid argument. Yes, sacrifice is amazing. Freedom is amazing. Hand of Protection is amazing. But it's also something that is provided by Rets and Prop Paladins. So it's not something that Holy is bringing to the table. They do bring Devotion Aura, which is powerful. You do have Devotion Aura, but essentially you are just a Paladin like any other, and what you're bringing to the table is this turreting, continuous, very repetitive, three heals on three guys, looking for raid members. If there's nothing else to heal, fine, I'll heal the tank. But other than that, you're just kind of turreting out the same heals over and over again and watching those heals duplicate. And while you are extremely high on the healing meters, it's not really down to skill. Your, your main skill point of the Holy Paladin for many is making sure your beacons are up. And beyond that, you're just kind of making sure you've got mana and just chunneling out those eternal flames constantly. So I totally... I don't get the Paladin as a fun class. I don't think it is. Uh, the Priest! The Priesty Priest. Obviously, we've recently seen... And if you're thinking of returning a 6.2, you might not have seen that essentially Blizzard openly said, once again, if you have Ace Healing Priest in your raid, he should be Dis. Uh, Dis is a big point of contention and always has been. We weren't, I don't think anybody was surprised that Dis Priests have once again become absolutely 
amazing. And it's very difficult for them not to become amazing when you have a spammable absorb that can't be sniped and taken away from you in any way, shape, or form. Combine that with clarity of will, and what you have is the ability of one particular spec in the game to ultimately prepare people for periods when they will not get healed. Going up on the black hand balconies, we want clarity of wills on those guys. Nobody else can provide that support. So they become an ultra class, essentially, extremely overpowered. Lots of suggestions about ways to fix this. I think the people who enjoyed this don't want it fixed. They're quite happy with how they play, and that's understandable. But from a overall standpoint, there's a problem with this, and it's always going to tilt the balance in favour of bringing a disc priest. And if you're a priest who doesn't like this specifically, you're probably getting very, very fucking tired of having to be disc because it is so much better. Whereas disc can do things no other healer can can, Holy is replaceable and mixable with the other classes. Not to say Holy's bad by any means. I think we should touch on Holy a little bit here and say Holy is absolutely fine in terms of what it does. It's comparable to the other healers. It's it's in a good place. It works. And it's got great tools and a combination of spells that work differently, unlike the Monk, that allow it to pick and choose and really min-max its play if done right. There are places where you can hard cast Prayer of Mending and make that work for you and make it work really well. So back to this. The problem is this, as I see it, is the fully control of a spammable bubble is obviously a huge problem. It would probably be nice to have a cooldown back for that or make it more powerful. Or simply put, either make it a DPS spec, which I don't really like the idea of this weird sort of amalgamation DPS spec. That's worked badly in the past. I would just prefer to see that the Disc Priest has a percentage of its heals go towards Absorbs, but it's still essentially a healing class. I think that would work out well, is if it puts out around the same healing but works differently. I think that would be absolutely fine. Instead of being able to spam huge absorbs onto people, you heal in a different kind of way than a holy does, but you also provide these extra bubbles which aren't as, aren't as powerful, usually a passive proc or something along those lines. Maybe something like that that doesn't make it so... A disc just has to stand there and bubble everybody and that's about it and do really wonderful things with that as well as a byproduct it actually works really really well uh this is always going to be a problem as long as it's completely absorb focused and while i understand the arguments of people who love this to say well i want to stay absorb focused of course you do because irrevo irrevocably unless those bubbles are absolute dog shit you're going to be super powerful at some point and be an absolute guaranteed raid spot which I think is uh, a dangerous place to be. A guaranteed raid spot is never good. It's never good to be a guaranteed raid spot because you you lose some of your you lose some of your ability to be competitive. I think, and that's that's just terrible. You don't want that. On to our final one then, the shaman. The shaman become a mainstay, which is great to see. It always works out this way. I mean, if we historically look at the shaman. What do we see? We see a class that tends to start a little bit weak, a little bit iffy, and then by the towards the end or after the middle, it's like we need a fucking shaman in there. We do. Great mobility, great movement speed, great cooldown, spirit link, healing tide tone, putting out as much as the others, man. Uh, but still a lack of usage from their toolkit. It's nice to see that grounding totem actually had some effect this, uh, this time round. I would certainly like to see more of a focus, and I think we've asked for this for a very long time, is more of a focus onto totems. Blizzard kind of addressed that and said, yeah, totems are a little underwhelming. Maybe we can do something along those lines with totems. It's it's such a huge feature of the class. You look at the login screen, you can see a totem in the background, but it's usually down to keeping healing stream down. Things like that should could probably be removed at this point in, in favour of more powerful totems or even simpler totems that give some sort of passive buffs and give, give shamans something to manage instead of falling back into a sort of chain heal spammy, which we're not quite there yet, but certainly will be in Hellfire Citadel. I have no doubt it'll be just endless chain heal spam going there. Other than that, the playstyle still baffles me a little bit. We've yet to see things like Elemental Blast be changed into something that we could target at players. And I don't see why that would be a huge issue, honestly. Having to target in DPS, like, mandatory with something as powerful as Elemental Blast is just weird gameplay. Although it's not difficult by any means, let's not get crazy here and say, oh, this is a really hard thing to do, is to randomly shoot a target with Elemental Blast. It's just frustrating. I've got other things to focus on rather than just clicking a boss or using some sort of macro just to fire off my Elemental Blast. I would rather my Elemental Blast do something to a friendly target. I'm a healer, after all. That would be really, really nice. Um, I would also like to see probably a lot of changes with the, the level 100 talents. I can't imagine these things are going to stick around. Star of Elemental is great, but it's, you know, it's again, it's out of your hands. you got to get it going. Cloudburst Totem has just been an absolute disaster from start to finish. And High Tide! 
as chain heal becomes even better and better and better uh high tide will see more and more use blah 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 blah. usual kind of stuff but other than that it's not something we particularly want to see that gameplay is kind of tired and old on top of that though it's no no uh there's no ignoring the great output that they're putting out the ability to move spirit walkers grace is just constantly a godsend to every single resto shaman out there right now and i don't think we're ever going to take that away from them Right now, we've got this. Uh, if we've got to come to a conclusion, we're probably going to see the same thing in Hellfire Citadel that we've seen towards the end of Blackrock Foundry, which is a Paladin and a Dis Priest up front taking charge, and then a not so much a fight, but a nice choice of who to fill the rest of the spots with, because they're all pretty even. They're pretty even in what they can do, and some would argue a Resto Shaman has now become a, the the third major player. Like you want a Resto Shaman there, but I would argue that yeah, while they're really good and maybe even slightly better than the others, it's not so much that the others are benched. There's no healer right now that warrants the bench, other than maybe, and probably rightfully so, if you've got some priest who absolutely refuses to play Dis because ignoring the power of that spec is silly. It's just a silly thing to do in favor of somebody being a little bit stubborn and saying, well, you know, you chose a priest and historically this has been the case, so you shouldn't come as no surprise that, yeah, Dis is once again very, very powerful. Other than that, your healer setup is pretty flexible and i don't think you can ask for more than that with the healers is to have choices it's never nice to have a healing class that just doesn't fit and it's not there we saw this shift towards niche healers coming back a little bit and that's worked out rather well the only reason holy's overpowered or a mainstay is because it just has crazy output with its turreted style healing uh, similar with the priest, it just has this crazy absorb. They have these niches that have become very, very powerful and very, very useful, uh, which allows it synergizes well with the remainders of the healing specs, allowing them to fill the gaps, so to speak, and make up for all the stuff that those two very powerful specs can't really do. It's not a bad situation to be in. It really isn't. And while some of the healers might look at their brothers, their paladin brothers and their priest brothers with a little bit of envious eyes, you're not going to be benched because you're playing a resto shaman. You're not going to be benched because you're playing a resto druid. You're not going to be benched for playing a holy priest if you've always got already got a dis. That situation isn't happening. It's not happening as much as people might fear that happening. It just isn't. All these specs have their right and proper place. And while some might be slightly more powerful, you need more than they can fill. You don't really want two Holy Paladins. You don't want two Dis Priests. So that's two out of four or five spots, which frees up all these other specs to fill in those gaps. And that's a pretty good scenario to be in for the healers, honestly. And I wouldn't be too sad about it. All right, guys, thank you for listening to my healer review. Ranged is up next, so stick around. That'll be out probably tomorrow or the day after. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye.